Hey there, this is Adam Lee with PogNow.com. Next up we're going to take a look at the software tour of the new Samsung Galaxy Nexus for Verizon. Let's check it out. First off, you've already seen a lot of coverage on the Galaxy Nexus uh, version of Android called Ice Cream Sandwich. So with the Verizon version, uh, it's mostly the same, but we have some a couple of Verizon apps that have been included. So in this video, I'm going to show you those real quick and then go over some of the things that I really like about Ice Cream Sandwich, as well as some issues that you may want to know about. Uh, so first off, we go to the app tray, and we see all the apps that it comes with. Facebook I downloaded separately. So we have Messenger, Gmail, Google+, Plus all the usual stuff. Uh, these two I added. My Verizon Mobile. This one is from Verizon. So you can access your Verizon profile. You gotta log in. And we also have one more. Verizon Backup Assistant. So this will let you sync contacts with Verizon. And you can set a schedule and all that. So those are the two apps that Verizon adds to the Galaxy Nexus. Now let me talk about uh, Ice Cream Sandwich a little. The first thing I really like is the recent apps listing. So this gives you a good thumbnail view of about three and a half of your most recent programs and you can scroll through and it's really easy to see and we can tell very easily what we're looking at in terms of different programs. So that's really nice and if we swipe it like that it goes away but it doesn't really, it doesn't actually close so that may cause some confusion. Now let's go back. I also really like the live wallpaper. If you can see that it's very subtle. That's one of them. We have more. Uh, this is the default one. It's very slow moving, it's not terribly distracting. You can st still see all the buttons and navigation. And uh, we also have the Google search stays on all the home screens. And overall the design has come a long way since my first Android device, the uh, G1. So we see a lot of differences. The design really looks a lot more digitally authentic, which is kind of the same thing that uh, Windows Phone was going for. And we'll also see some similarities there. For example, let's see. If we go to Facebook, uh, you see down here, there's a little dot dot dot. And that is kind of like the same dot 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 over here. Now on Windows Phone, the reason this makes sense is because that's obviously an ellipses symbol which generally, generally stands for more information or some text is missing. And we tap it and we see obviously a menu comes up and we have a translation of these icons there in English. On Ice Cream Sandwich, the menu comes up normally there and the dots are vertical. So it might be a little less obvious as to what that means. And one thing that might be weird or confusing is the dot dot dots. The menu isn't always there. The menu button moves around. Okay, right now it's up here. And now it's even in a different place. It's way up here now. So there's your menu. Uh, it would be nice if it was always in the same place. That way we would know where to find it. But it isn't. Now, guess where it is? A total, another different place. It's not in the normal row of navigation buttons. It's a little bit above it. So there's your menu. And another thing that I don't like, none of these buttons have any translation. You have to 
You have to figure out what these little icons mean. I really like the calendar. It's a new design. Much cleaner. We have our menu up there. Okay, let's go home. Now these are not hardware buttons anymore. These are all part of the screen. Now the advantage to that is that they can change uh, depending on what you're doing. So for example, if you're in the camera, the buttons kind of go away. They become little dots. They're very subtle. Now while we're in the camera, this is a 5 megapixel camera, and we have the shutter button there, and it is very, very quick. So just bam, rap rapid fire. Those are three pictures I just took. And you have options here. And they're not labeled, and there's, there's no text, so you got to kind of guess what they do. That's a panoramic. And it's going to tell us to... Well, it didn't tell us to do anything. Capturing panorama. And so you get a panorama picture. And sometimes it's uh, kind of off. Okay, but the camera is really quick. Uh, sometimes it's too quick and doesn't focus first. But anyway, back to the buttons. If you press it, it'll show up and you can see it now. Let's go home. So like I said, one of the advantages of having those buttons be screen based is that you can change them. And we saw that the menu would show up there sometimes. But what Google forgot about is when they don't do anything, do, uh, do they really need to be there? I mean, obviously this looks like a bug. Back button doesn't do anything. So, uh, this one still works. But if uh, it's not going to do anything, does it need to be there? No. Another thing, if we look at the screen and say you're a new person or you have a feature phone and you really don't want to learn something new, if you look at these buttons, nothing is labeled. You're, you're really going to have to look at these to figure out what they mean. Or just do trial and error, which a lot of people don't really feel like learning. And we still have all our home screens. There's no pinch there, which is fine. Now, a couple other things. I only downloaded a few apps, and a lot of them just don't work. Like that one. Viber just tries to launch and then goes away. Um, and one more thing with Facebook. Say I go into the contacts and accounts. I kind of want to add my Facebook friends as an account in my contacts. So we go there and it doesn't do anything. Google actually blocked Facebook from integrating with the Galaxy Nexus. So you won't be able to access your Facebook contacts from there. You'll have to go to the app. And that has some issues too. Say I forget and leave this running. See, so we're loading. The battery level is going to go down very quickly. Normally, if I keep everything shut off and just have some push email accounts and whatnot, the battery would last a very nice day and a half, two days, which is really good. I was very happy with that. But if you forget and leave something like Facebook running, the battery will last about four hours. So you gotta really babysit this device and make sure you close your programs. And again, doing it like this does not close the programs. It is still running. What you have to do is go into apps and see the running apps. And this is where we'll be able to stop them. Okay. Now the settings are very comprehensive and they're all in one place, so I really like that. We also have some special developer settings. So we got some cool things there. Now next up you probably want to see the speed test, because this is a Verizon 4G LTE. Now 
And at least according to the speed test, it is crazy fast. We only have two bars here, so it's, it's only getting four. But I can look at the results. And you'll see some of my results here. We get 12.9, 12.3 different locations. Sometimes 0 0.8. There's 11, there's 0 0.12, there's a 17, and uh, there's actually some bugs sometimes. Sometimes it just completely loses connection, doesn't have any internet access. Sometimes it's extremely slow, sometimes it's ridiculously fast. I'm not sure if that's a Verizon network issue or something with the device, but it's kind of annoying. Another thing that I like is if you press the BlackBerry button right here. <laughs> okay, well, it's not really BlackBerry button, but it looks like one. We get the app drawer, but we also have widgets. It's, they're all in one place now, so that's really easy to find all the little programs. Since the widgets are kind of kind of a program that just runs on the home screen. So it's it's less difficult to figure out where everything is. And you have a marketplace button right here, so that's really easy to quickly go there and find new apps. I really like that. Alright, so that's our look at the software on the Verizon version of the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Now with Google's Ice Cream Sandwich operating system, the latest version 4.0. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and that's it for now.